So we'll discuss about the cast metal restoration. The cast restoration will provide a long lasting restoration to maintain the proximal contact for a considerable period of time. So the cast restorations are made up of either noble or the precious metals or the base metal alloys or the titanium alloys. Here if you see the noble metals are resistant to oxidation and the chemical reaction whereas the metal base metal alloys are the metals elements that are chemically reactive to their environment now we'll see what is an inlay and what is an onlay and the crown is inlay is an intracoronal restoration which is fabricated extracoronally and then cemented onto the prepared tooth whereas onlay is the combination of intra and the extra coronal restoration when one or more cups are covered whereas the crown is an extra coronal cast restoration where all the cups are covered now we'll see the materials for the cast restorations according to the servants we use the traditionally high gold alloys low gold alloys platinum silver alloys and the base metal alloys so we'll see what are the indications of the cast restorations if you see an inlay the inlay is usually uh, indicated when the cavity width does not exceeds the one third of the intercuspal distance and if case of extensive proximal caries involving the buccal and the lingual line angles and even in the case of proximal margins extending subgingivally if you come to the contraindications in young permanent teeth these are avoided due to the increased chances of the iatrogenic pulpal exposure due to the presence of high pulp horns and also due to the high plaque and the caries index and even in the case of uh, when the adjacent or the opposing teeth have the dissimilar metallic restorations these are avoided to prevent the galvanism if you see in general the principles of the inlay cavity preparations are similar to those of the amalgam and other direct materials however certain concepts are different for cast gold inlays and also certain design features are specific to these prepara preparations one of those is the preparation path they should have the single preparation path which is opposite to the direction of the occlusal loading and this path is usually parallel to the long axis of the tooth the single path allows the easy removal of the wax pattern as well as the proper seating of the casting it increases the retention of the restoration and minimizes any rocking during the function now we'll see an inlay taper is the concept of inlay taper is nothing but the making the cavity walls should slightly diverge occlusally from the pulpal floor as the restoration is fabricated by an indirect method this helps in easy removal of the wax pattern and the proper seating of the inlay ideally if you see the opposing walls should be parallel to the uh, adjacent walls to provide the good retention but this is practically not possible that's the reason we give 2 to 5 degrees of taper per wall has accepted and this taper can be increased when the length of the wall increases or the surface involvement increases now we'll see what is circumferential ties it refers to the design of the cavus surface margin of an inlay cavity preparation it's of two types one is bevel other is the flare if you see what is bevel is this refers to the plane of the cavity wall or the floor which is directed away from the cavity preparation and the bevels are usually placed on the occlusal and the gingival cavus surface margins of the cavity preparation and according to the shape and the extent of the tissue involvement the bevels are of six types the first bevel is a partial bevel it involves only the part of the enamel wall and it is not more than 2/3 of the thickness of the enamel 
and what is an short bevel is is that it involves the entire enamel wall but not the dentil this is usually indicated in most of the cast gold inlay cavities now we'll see what is a long bevel is this involves all the enamel and half of the dentinal wall this may also used for the inlay cavities and it is also one of the resistance and retention features of the preparation and coming to the full bevel this includes the entire preparation of the enamel and the dentinal wall it is used as a last resort has it is deprived the preparation of all its resistance and retention fall now is the counter bevel is used when the cusps require the capping for protecting them now we'll see the functions of the cavity bevels these has to satisfy the requirements of ideal cavity walls according to the noy the noise principles includes that the enamel should rest on the sound dentin and the enamel rods forming the cable surface angle must have their inner ends resting on the sound dentin and also they should be covered with a restorative material the cable surface angle should also be trimmed to remove the unsupported enamel now we'll see the finishing and polishing of the cable surface enamel will provide the lap sliding fit of the cavity and uh, now we'll see the marginal bevel which also reduces the space between the tooth structure and the restoration that helps in the retention and if you see the acute angled metal margin that is 35 to 45 degrees allows the metal margins to be burnished against the tooth surface and they also create an obtuse angled tooth margin they produce the cable surface angle of about 135 to 145 degrees and this is the bulkiest and the strongest configuration for any tooth margins now we'll see what a flares are the flays are the flat or the concave peripheral portions of the facial or the lingual proximal walls they are usually placed on the facial and the lingual proximal margins of the cavity preparation there are of two types one is the primary flare other is a secondary flare the primary flare is a, like a long bevel that is external enamel wall of the pro proximal portion is at 45 degrees to the inner dentinal wall whereas the secondary flare is a flat plane superimposed peripheral to the primary flare and is usually prepared on the enamel this may have a different angulations and also the extent and indicated in case of the broad contact areas and if there is a caries of widened extent wider widely extended now we'll see the retention grooves the axial proximal grooves requ are required when the wall dimensions are less and also coming to the internal box is an additional retention and resistance form is indicated in case of the shallow cavities or short tooth when the teeth are uh, having the occlusal dovetail which cannot be prepared due to the wide defect and it is prepared on the pulpal floor just adjacent to the uninvolved marginal ridge now we'll discuss the cavity preparation of the inlay and in this if you go through the steps of it you should actually use an 271 bar and also the 169 bar 169 l bar which are carbide bars used for cavity preparation you by keeping the bar parallel to that of a tooth structure penetrate the bar closest to the involved marginal ridge and keeping the same depth establish the outline form now the extent of the preparation and the dovetail should be given on the occlusal surface the proximal and the overcutting can also result in weakening of the marginal ridge so care should be taken before getting into the proximal cavity 
Now the proximal ditch is given after the occlusal preparation, and the gingival floor should provide an at least of 0.5 mm five clearance from adjacent tooth preparation. Now the two cuts are made to isolate the proximal enamel, and these isolated enamel wall is broken off by using the spoon excavator. And remove the remaining caries, and the pulp protection is given in deeper preparation by placing the calcium hydroxide as a liner, and the GIC as a base. And the retention grooves are placed in the lingual and the facial axial line angles. and the bevel in the gingival margins of the proximal box this bevel helps in removing the unsupported enamel rods at the cavo surface margin the occlusal bevel should be 0 degrees uh, beginning at the occlusal 1/3 of adjacent occlusal walls when the cusps are steep no occlusal bevel is placed especially in case of the narrow preparation because here while occlusal preparation and the enamel rods of the inner one third of the inclined plane get beveled automatically now we'll see the modifications in class 2 preparations for an inlay if you see the anatomy of the mandibular first premolar is different which require the special attention for cavity preparation so the smaller lingual cusp may require occlusal cusp capping when indicated and the occlusion depth should not be more than 2 mm and the transverse ridge is strong and smooth and should be conserved and coming to the maxillary molars the oblique ridge provides the strength to the tooth which is sound and unaffected by the caries so when prepared it is to be done on the mesial and the distal side in a two separate preparation instead of one emory cavity now we'll see the cavity preparation steps for the onlay if you see the occlusal outline form of the onlay it has to be done with a 271 tapered fissure burr held parallel to the long axis of the tooth and the occlusal outline is widened to involve all the defective tooth structure taking care to circumvent the cusps and to extend into the fissures and the cavity width should be made as minimal as possible The taper of the burr provides the desired 3 to 5 degree divisions for each internal cavity. Next, if you see the proximal box preparation, the proximal ditch cut is performed using the number 271 burr and the proximal boxes are prepared similar to that of inlay. And the cuspal reduction is done using the 271 burr and the depth cuts are provided of 1.5 to 2 mm on the crest of the cusps and on the facial and the lingual grooves these depth cuts serves as a guide to complete the cuspal reduction after the cuspal reduction we actually go to the grooves that is a facio axial line angle and on the lingual axial line angles in the dentin which helps in giving the added retention to the onlay cavity finally the junction between the counter bevels and the secondary face and the gingival bevels are rounded to produce an uninterrupted blending of all the junctions the final preparation of the onlay cavity will help in providing the cleaned cavity by removing the debris from all the cavity using an a water syringe or the cotton pellet that's the brief about the inlay and the onlay cavity preparations